In this video, we're going to take a look at the types of transformations. There's actually three that we're going to look at, so let's jump right in. The first type of transformation we're going to look at is called a translation, and this is kind of just a fancy word for a slide, and we're going to say this is technically a slide along a straight line. And the best way to show you this is to dive right into an example. So I've got my Cartesian plane, and I've got a nice triangle here. And the question is going to ask us to slide the triangle five units left and three units down. So the first things first, I'm going to label my points. Okay, that's what we always want to do. So I want to have point A, point B, and point C. And you could label them whatever you'd like, but I typically stick with ABC. So I got to go five units left. So I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to pick point A, and I'm going to go five units left. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five units left. Now to show the down, I'm going to go three units down. I'm going to use a different color here, and I'm going to go one, two, three from that point. Now I know that's where my new point is. And I'm actually going to call this point A. I'm going to call it A prime, and that's just going to have a little apostrophe after it. And that's what we're going to use to show that we've made a transformation, is this little prime symbol on a letter. So let's do the exact same thing for B and C. So I want to go one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go one, two, three down. And this is going to give me point B prime. And again for point C, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go three down. One, two, three. Put my point, and I've got point C prime here. And if I want, I can connect the dots to make my new transformed triangle and yours will look a little nicer because of course you will use a ruler to make your lines nice and straight but that's the basic idea of a translation we can do the exact same thing if we're going right left up down just as long as we're doing the exact same thing to every single point the whole object will slide that direction The next one we're going to look at is called a reflection, and we've probably talked about reflections before. You, you see reflections probably every morning when you look into the mirror, and we actually call a reflection a mirror image on a line of reflection. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's now dive into an example again. So I've got this shape here. I've got four points here. First things first, I'm going to label my points. I'm going to go A, I'm going to go B, I'm going to go C, and I'm going to go D here. Now the question here is going to ask us to reflect the shape in line of reflection R. So what that means, I've got this line here, this blue line right here, line R, and I have to reflect this image. So I've got to flip it over like a mirror kind of flips images over. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to measure how far away each point is from that line. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I can see that A is one, two, three, four units away. I'm going to put a little 4 there. That means that A prime has to also be 4 units away, but it has to be going the other direction from line R. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4 units, and that's exactly where my point A prime is going to go. I'm going to do the exact same thing here for all of the other points. So point D is pretty easy. It's 1. I'm going to go 1 over. And of course, that is where point D prime is going to go. Let's do the same for um, point C. This one is one, two, three units away from the line of reflection. So C prime is also going to be three units away. One, two, three. And I can put my point there and my C prime right there. Okay. And the last one here is B. B is going to be a little tricky because it's right in line with D, but we can still make this work. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four units away. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four units away. And then I can put my point B prime. Connect my dots. And I have my perfectly reflected, reflected sorry, new image of this shape. And I denote that with my A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. And that's how we go about reflections. And we can do this in any direction. We can go up and down. We can go left to right, right to left. Either way, 
as long as you're making sure the distance is always the same for each point from the line of reflection. And our last type of transformation is called a rotation, which we probably already know because we know a rotation day to day is just a turn. And in math, we're going to talk about it being a turn about a point, which just means we're going to turn around a certain point. Now, when we're talking about rotations, it's important to consider which way are we going to turn. Are we going to turn left? Are we going to turn right? It's important for us to, to establish that. So how we do that is with some terms called clockwise and counterclockwise. So if you think of a clock, um, the arms go this way. Time travels this way. And this is what we call clockwise, when it's turning that way around. Now, when we're turning the opposite way, going the opposite way, of how a clock's legs turn, that is called counterclockwise. And that's a very important thing to remember when we're thinking about what direction we're making for a rotation. So let's try a rotation. Here I have my Cartesian plane, um, I have a shape, and of course I'm gonna label its vertices. I'm gonna have A, B, C, and D. I just put that inside, you'll see why. And the question's asking me to rotate the shape clockwise around point P. Well, here's point P and clockwise, as we remember from over there, is turning this way. So I'm going to turn this shape 180 degrees around point P. So what that would look like is I'm going to take a point. In this case, I'm going to take point C and I'm going to make a new point down here. And as I've rotated it 180 degrees, this becomes C prime. And then I can kind of take all the points and it's very difficult for me to show on the computer but this is what it ends up turning out to look like. I've got my point C prime there. That would make this point here. I'm gonna use green so I keep consistent. This point here would be my B prime. I'll just color over that C prime. This would be my A prime. And D, P and D prime are all the exact same points. So that's kind of how a rotation looks. And we're gonna practice this a ton. So if it seems a little confusing at this point, uh, don't worry, we're gonna get there. Hopefully this gives us a good basic understanding of the three types of transformations we're gonna be looking at in class. Make sure to try these out and ask lots of questions if you have any.